35 minutes, 16 seconds. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you'll be able to listen to the show. You are now in the host queue. Hello, Christian. It's Jonathan again. No time, no see, huh, buddy? No, <laughs> man. Yeah. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm going to talk about um this brave le- young woman trying to trying to get some social acceptance for Latinos and somehow try to quit the Colin Kaepernick stance. Interesting, huh? Yeah, I'm looking, we're looking forward to that, man. Hold on a minute, okay? Yeah. <sighs>
Can you just share more specifically about that situation, what she, what she said? Sure. So, so the situation is, Cindy has four children, um, and they all came to the U.S. fleeing violence in Guatemala. Um, three of their children have already received, uh, received asylum. And Wilhelm has the same details, the same exact facts in his case, mm-hmm. yet he's been detained for a year and three months fighting his asylum case. Um, he's gone before this immigration judge three times to ask for bond, and he's been consistently denied because these judges and these rural detention centers are usually extra strict, and also immigration authorities want to make examples out of people to dissuade others from trying to seek asylum in the U.S. So they purposely make this process unfair and hard, um, and some of the key people detained or try to deport higher numbers of people mm-hmm. to make sure that others get the message in Central America that they're not going to get any safety in the U.S. And so that's the situation Wilson has been in. And so what's important to kind of remember about these cases is it's both up to the judge, but it's also up to immigration authorities, because they could use their discretion at any point to release to these funds. And that's exactly what she was asking Secretary Johnson to do, that she used his power and used his discretion to release him from an unfair detention system. Yeah, well, my question is, um, backing up to the press conference that you were holding, um, what, so the press conference was what you deliver the 2,200,000 signatures, correct? Yes. But no one showed, but the, the call out to have someone show up and receive it, they didn't show up? Is that what happened? That's exactly what happened, and that's our concern with the review process. So a couple of weeks back, the Department of Justice, Secretary Lorena Lynch, made an announcement that the Department of Justice was no longer going to be using private facilities. And let's be very clear, 13 of the 14 facilities that they had um, at the DOJ were for uh, people who they have prosecuted for criminal re-entry and criminal entry. So it's mostly immigrant people who are in those private facilities on the Department of Justice side. Now, they've made an announcement that they're going to phase out and close those contracts, forcing the Department of Homeland Security to do a review of their own procedures. So what we're very concerned about is that the Secretary, um, Director Salvani, I'm sorry, who's the Director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement of ICE, who's the people who arrest and deport most folks, she made an announcement that it would be almost impossible to close down their private contract because over 70% of immigrants that are in detention are in private facilities, mostly run by CTA and GEO. So she's already foreshadowing that the review is basically to say, oh no, we can't. So they're going to have an internal review process behind closed doors, and they're not including the voices of those who have had personal experiences inside of the detention system. If they actually listen to those people, they would know there's a huge problem with these private prisons. You know, in, for example, here in Arizona and Eloy, if a private detention center uses solitary confinement or the whole and retaliation when people make accusations of sexual abuse. There's no investigation. People are just put in the hole. You know, in other places where they've asked for medical attention, similarly, people are thrown into the hole until they get medical attention. Um... The food is inhumane, the medical right. services are inadequate. There's a long list of problems that exist that they're not going to argue if they don't create a public process where people can put it in their input. Right. And I, you say you always, I, I, I would be remiss before I, I go up with, with a question or two to not mention my colleagues at Latino USA for not mentality. Uh, this is my day job here. I'm a Marlon Bishop. I'm going to host on series on the New USA called The Strange Death of Jose de Jesus, which is one of the suicides that happened um, in the last couple of years on Eloy, um, and it was done with the Marshall Project. And if, if people haven't heard that, I, I kind of tell that to anyone who's talking about Eloy, they, it, it really does speak to a lot of the issues that you're saying. I think that my question, um, now I put two and two together because I actually saw the video and actually also wrote it for LatinoUSA.org. Um, and I know that Tina Rebels wrote about it as well. And I realized that that was you. Was that you here with you? It is. I was like, what was that? I was trying to think, like, what was that? I know this person. I've seen her before. It was one of those, like, of all the people, you know, it's like, 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 I know this person. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you were right next to the secretary. 
very contentious. Um, while, 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 while the mom, uh, she said he was, was pleading, she was pleading with him. This wasn't a, this wasn't a, this wasn't like any secretary term. She was like, you see the video, it's like, she's pleading with him in Spanish. And you could see, there was points in the video, at least from Secretary Johnson. And I want to get your impression from this, but she talked for a second that it was the husband. She was talking about her husband, was actually her son. He, he said, well, does he have legal representation? And, and, and the mom said, yes, in Spanish, she translated. Well, he could be released on bond. And she thinks the judge is not doing it. He said, in Campbell. So you're right there, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Like you. Right there, on the video, you're literally what? A couple feet, maybe like less than a foot, you're right next to him. What was, like, what was the vibe like? You were interpreting it, and obviously we can't speak into the mind of Kate Johnson, but what was it like? What was the scene there? What was it, was they, were they uncomfortable? Were, were they like, we gotta get out of here? Like, what, what was your sense? Myself. I so one, I do want people to kind of understand. I know the, the video makes it seem like a very easy sidewalk interaction. I've actually had people have people ask me if it was just by coincidence. Let's be very clear. This is the Department of Homeland Security main director. He's a secretary. He's one of the most important people in the cabinet. He's running around with about the world. Uh, one of the most important people in the world right now. It's not even a cabinet. When you when you think about it. Right. So, no, 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 the fact that security was insane. So, being able to have moved as quickly as we did to be able to have a conversation with her was very important. So, people are holding that space and being insistent on their story. It was both an act of, you know, pleading to the life of her son, but also of political bravery um, and making sure that that space was a law. It was actually a very rare instance. Secretary really has those types of interactions where he's talking directly to the people whose lives he's affecting with his policy. Um, I, I thought that it was very important to be able to have that interaction so that he kind of clocked what was happening and also has more pressure around this issue of private prisons because it's so easy for them to whitewash the issue and pretend that as long as there's some sort of review, nothing happens. But there's so much still within their own that they could be doing to reduce the DHS and the tenants of private contracts. Um, I, to me, his interaction, I think he was, it, it surprised me that he heard the story. Um, I think he was very surprised that we had found him. When I handed him at the beginning of the video, you can see I handed him a letter signed by color between the Black Lives for Just Immigration and Kente asking for a meeting. When he realized that it was addressed to him, he was very surprised. Um, Again, he's not used to being, to have these types of actions happen on him. Um, so I think he was just kind of shocked and taken back. I think we'll really see what his response will be as we follow up, which we will be following up with him to see if they'll take any sort of action on Wilson's case. So I also just want the public to know that the fight is not over, um, and it won't be over until Wilson is actually free from the tension. So I should be shocked. Some of the takeaways that I'm getting from the exposure to this confrontation in the is just the fact that a lot of us, like a lot of people, don't understand how this how this is set up. That you have the Department of Homeland Security um, that has the detention centers are really are are private, are privately owned. I mean, you hear a lot of a lot of times they talk a lot about, um, you know, private-run prisons, but not private-run detention centers. And you just said that 70% sure, sure. of, the of the detention centers are privately run. Can you um, just talk to us more about how no, that uh, works? 70% 70 of the immigrants um, are in private prisons. Yeah, yeah. There so, you go. Okay. And, that, and, and for, yeah, for people that are trying to figure all this out, what what um uh, what Kazita is saying is you know um Tanya who is Latina she's from I believe she's from a former prosecutor from Dallas she's the head mm -hmm. right so she reports to so ICE customs you know customs enforcement I should also just try to realize that not not a lot of people know this but they report to the Department of Homeland Security. 
injury. So, so Sandania is so Jay Johnson and the CEO Sandania is one of the you know, one of the, the direct reports. Um, but yeah, I was stuck on that too myself. Sure, you saw on that set. What? What? Why are not people getting this? I'm not. I'm not. What? Do you, why? Why did not that they? Department of Justice 
people have been following the political cycle. They'll know that, you know, Secretary Clinton has said after much back and forth that after her campaign last year was was getting, there, there wasn't direct campaign contributions, but it was, you know, the story here is up to the story that there was money coming from the front of the prison lobby uh, through not the campaign for Clinton, but people that were associated with the campaign. And, and you can squeeze that on the air and stuff. It's just a Google lab. It's really, um, it was a story from last year, which led to a piece by Vice that kind of said that, you know, Mark Rubio and Secretary Clinton were getting the most money from the Clinton lobby. And that led to Secretary Clinton to finally say, I will be disassociating myself from private prisons. Um, no money, you know, any money that came to the campaign is being returned, whatever. But, um, what's the political angle on this? Because I think what's really interesting, um, and this is my final question, and we really appreciate this, has been a fantastic conversation, but so this memo that comes from Johnson, the assessment, the report is not happening until after the election. It's not happening until the end of November. Um, To me, at least the question that, that begs an answer is, will, do you think that anyone will ask for a campaign that, you know, private immigration potentially is also private prison and what her position is? Do you think she should say? Do you think someone will ask her the same question you guys asked Secretary Johnson? And what do you think she would say? I mean, saying like, just, just cut the ties now. Don't wait till the like, Like it's time to cut the ties. So, what's your sense about all that political? Because that's that's kind of where it gets a little bit messy. Yeah, I and mean, I think the Clinton campaign when when that happens around the nation, they try to create some distance between themselves, and um, they try to create some distance between themselves and the public prison industry. And so, I think there's so much more room for her to act. And I would. I think it's about one more conversation campaign. We would like to see her answer this question directly about whether or not she would cut the contract with private prisons. Unfortunately, right. her history and her track record are not very encouraging. Mostly because, especially on the issue of the, a great percentage of the people who are in detention now are asylum seekers because of uh, you know, situations across the country, but specifically in Central America. Her involvement in school and hunger, her involvement in um, deportation policies of children, um, and the creation of family detention centers as the Secretary of State are incredibly alarming. And so, definitely on the campaign trail, I think she's trying to have different positions, but we're, we're not uh, trying to not see her history in terms of how she's helped to sort of these processes, um, as well as her position in 1996. Um, with the creation of the IRA IRA law. So the 96th immigration law that created even more criminalization and created provisions to ask for mandatory detention so that when people have any sort of criminal record, they can be held without bond and no access to freedom. She was a big part of creating those in 1996. So I think that she has a long way to go to prove to the community that she will actually be an ally of the city. Thank you so much. Please keep us posted um, with all the work that you guys are doing. Um, we really appreciate your time. This was a really informative uh, conversation, and I think you touched on a point that very few people in this country really can grasp and understand. So we'll talk about this, and thank you so much. We're going to bring you back. Um, yeah, that's so
contract and the prison that might translate over to an increase in in private detention centers, and that's not something yeah. that I have really, really thought about. That's you know, there's, there's, it was one of those like seventy percent, seventy percent are are private detention centers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what she was saying is. It was like the journalist in me was like, oh, I just need the connection. This is why I talk to people. And I'm like, so basically, you can take a contract from the Department of Justice and it's canceled and be like, hey, you know what? Let's transfer, let's use the parameters. And we're going to have to fill in, you know, we have to detain them. Okay, that was, uh, oh wow. So I think it was not as stressed to have a really fantastic guest. Um, all right, we're moving on to the West Virginia University letter that um, a first-year student, uh, not the next student, who is on with us right now. Um, first of all, is it Casey or Cassie? Uh, either Hello? Or. Hello, yeah, hi. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Cassie, it's all good. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, 
controversial. They didn't want to get uh, tied to a lot of the claims, and then I needed like evidence to back up any of the things that were presented inside the letter. Uh, it just didn't it wasn't going it wasn't going too well. Uh, so <clears throat> when the letter kind of just like got a little bit viral, uh, I was actually on my way to a like a to a North Carolina one weekend, and the letter was supposed to be published in the school newspaper that Friday. Turns out something happened where the letter was just distributed among like the entirety of uh, like you know like they just insert they print out uh, multiple copies of the letter, put it into the newspaper, and so when I came back, it was a little bit chaotic. Uh, kind of died down a bit. I experienced a little bit more of the sort of like racial violence that I was talking about in the letter, um, and then I decided to send the letter in basically um, because I still wasn't getting any responses that I needed from the administration. Um, and I, a lot of the responses that I was getting from administration were just really negative. Um, I was called threatening, and I made an individual feel uncomfortable by my presence. And it just like didn't seem like it was going to be uh, Yeah, so that's basically kind of like what drew this uh, into the letter. Uh, but that sort of shift 
on the afternoon when the letter went viral. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The letter went viral. Of these experiences. Um, and so I've been trying to also help them get to the kind of resources. 
resources that I now have access to to try to fix some of this stuff. Uh, unfortunately, that is happening on campus in terms of like racialized violence. Yeah, so I think one of the points, and I'm just putting, you know, the letter got attention not only on campus, it got attention on the internet, it got attention on our site. Um, but I think one of the things that I want to ask you has to do with the balance between speaking out and and sort of taking charge of your problem. Because I think, I think what the small number of, you know, we, we have online critics and trolls, and that's just the world that we live in. For sure, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's like the, the letter took us outside the question to as well, because it, it, it resonated with a lot of students, college students, or Latinx, or, what, or even some alumni, um, Latino alumni of West Virginia, but there was always the detractors, right? So, you know, you hear words that they're threatening. Reacting, um, you're not proud, yeah. you know. Don't you know? Don't take it. You know, why are you complaining? Like, you know, you should take ownership of what you do. And, and what I'm hearing, um, I want to get your thoughts on this. But what I'm hearing right now is like, I mean, you're on the debate team. You can't even pretty much in charge of this situation, and this is a way yeah. that you are you're speaking out. And I guess I have to see what people kind of say. Oh. Step in line, or you're overreacting. You think more of the town's never been like this, or, or let me teach you, young Latino girl, like how it is to be really you know, like step aside. So, what, how do you take all that, and how do you stay um, mature and focused? Because like, it sounds like it doesn't really seem to bother you this much, or to make you so much like a balance. At least what I'm hearing. Yeah. So I've actually read all the comments. I know people be saying. Um, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that uh, there, I think that uh, in a world, especially where we all experience instances of racialized violence uh, differently, that there, I, like, there, you know what I'm saying, like, we all, we all under, like, experience racialized violence differently. I just, in my whole thing, is like, if that's their opinion, then, like, so be it. I know that, like, I'm taking control of the situation, and I'm meeting with, like, as a first-year student, like, I'm meeting with the university's president, the president in his office. I'm meeting with President G. I'm meeting with the vice president to take control of what's happening. Right? So when I say, which I'm like, I would have never, 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 <laughs> for sure, and like, you know, like, I, I, I had some comments, I'm not gonna lie, they did hurt a little bit, I was like, what's going on, like, you know, but at the same time, I was like, I can't let what is happening online in any sort of way cloud what I want at the end of the tunnel. I want a center, I want places for Latinx on campus to come together and not experience the kinds of, like, violence that I've that experienced in the first couple of weeks here, and sure, I understand that we all interact differently in Oregon talking to personally, but the kinds of like but that doesn't I, I don't think that, that validates that like my experiences to me didn't happen. Or that these experiences individuals that I know didn't happen. Um and so right. it's that sort sort of like narrow minded view. But unfortunately, not everyone is perfect and I particularly think that there are, you know, just you know, one of the things, one of the things that I say all the time is, if you don't have the trolls, like you, you wrote a very, you know, you wrote a very truthful, honest, authentic letter. Um, I don't think I would have. I, I, I'm being really honest. I don't know about you, Sharif, but me at 18, 19 years old, I would have probably never been able to write a letter like this. So I, 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 I thank you. Parish doctor is now up to date. Saying, you know what? This happened to me, and no one's listening to me, and I am a member of this community, and this is a university, this is a place of learning. This is going to the top. And for sure, yeah. Thank you. I think that's the, yeah, that's the bigger that's the bigger thing here. It's like speaking out, it's about speaking out. It's about being true to yourself and speaking out and knowing that you this 
happens. So whenever anyone critiques about it, it still happens. And you're and you're taking control of that. So I can then do that as a dad because I have a <laughs> I have a teenage daughter who's about to go to college in the next couple of days. I commend you as a journalist. I commend you as a, you know, as just as, as a fellow member of the, you know, Latino, Latinx community to be like, this is exactly how we, how we educate people about our community, especially in places like Morgantown, West Virginia, which I'm sure there are other Latinx students there, but I'm sure there's not a lot of you. So, um, for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, where can I put I mean, I, I just have a couple, another couple quick questions for you. Have you yeah, talked yeah. to your parents? Have you talked to your parents about this? I mean, are, you, are they worried for your physical safety? I mean, because it, it sounds wow, like for 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 you to receive that kind of um, you know harassment, you know, on like your first few weeks of college, it's kind of freaky, right? That like the campus what they're not used to seeing. Students, so I mean, what I mean, have you talked to like your folks about you know what's going on? What do they have to say? Yeah, I, I definitely did. I've talked to both my both my parents, um, even my abuela, my abuelo, um, and so you know they at first were very upset, as any parent or anyone would be about the kinds of experiences right. that I had on campus. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was always taught growing up that if I see something that, or something happens that I don't particularly like it, I have two options. I could leave and just forget about it, or I could like make a difference and like change what I'm experiencing. I decided to go with the second route. Um, so I kind of just like talked a lot of things with both my parents, and they were just very encouraging of like, look, we understand like this may not be the safest place for you to be in right now. As your parents, we're going to support you with whatever. But, you know, no matter what you do, we're going to support you. If we need to drive up to West Virginia, like, we will. Um, so, what, like, like, in other words, they were just saying, like, what do you want to do in terms of how to make change or to just leave it and just transfer and just go back home? Um, and I told them, and I've had this conversation, that I, I want, I'm not going to just give up, you know? It's just not a thing. I was raised by a very strong mom. Um, and so... <laughs> Yeah, she's just like, if you want to see change, then, like, do it, you know? Um, and so they're very, very, very supportive of what I've done and just always checking in and making sure I'm okay, um, which I think I'm really appreciative to have Gary like, actually care. Uh, in terms of, you know, That's awesome. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, what, what are you trying to major in? They want you to you so right now I'm a double major in women and gender studies and Latin American studies. Um, yeah, and then I'm hopefully maybe we'll go to law school. <laughs> um, that's what I'm. Or maybe. Oh my I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm a Latin American. Uh, Latin American studies is, is top notch. Uh, having been, I, I graduated from that. But Casey, I, I, I we want to thank you for your time. I will say thank one thing. You. Like when you just said, yeah. yeah when you just said. Um, yeah, I'm going to take control of this, or, you know, will I be okay or not? I actually think you're going to be more than okay. I actually think yeah. you are doing things that, um, that, that you should be proud of yourself, keep speaking out, keep representing, uh, do it with class and, and truth, and you're going to be fine. And, you know, and hang on with your, you know, having a strong mom, like me, that helps a lot. And you know that you have a community out there. Uh, please let us know how it goes for you, especially in debate. I want to hear. I want to see you debate in action. We want to know more about you. <laughs> you know, it's really, really amazing. I want to know more. Like you, you sound like such an amazing person, and, and thank you so much for 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 trusting in Latino Rebels to publish that piece. And, hope, and hopefully, if it moves the message for you and it's moved the needle, that's what we're here for. And and, and thank you again. You're you're fantastic. Well, thank you for
I don't want to say anything if that ever happened to my daughter and then she said, you know, I'm going to write letters and I'm going to solve this problem myself. And you're like, I do the same way. I'd be like, do you need to drop up from there? But if you got yeah. this, you got it. You know what I mean? It's like, and Casey's got it. Like, I don't think you can see what you want. Yeah. And, and, and for all of us, you know, for the three or four people who, who look at uh, a letter and they see it online and they don't know that a real person wrote it, and then they have all these, like, they get into this sort of like, let me lecture you, young lady, about like how, what it is to be really that, you know, and you don't know, and you should know your place. You know what? She's absolutely right. So, yeah, I read it, whatever. You know? Not my word. Wait, so that, yeah, so, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, that was, that was the reaction it took people to her letter? No, 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 yeah. And yeah, there was, you know, most of the reaction was, was very positive, but then, you know, there was reaction that were like, no. um, yeah, there were trolls, and it's like, why would you be able to write this? I mean, let me just, I'm just going to pull one up. We have like a couple minutes left, but I can yeah. definitely pull one up. But it's like, um, yeah, you go to a school like WBQ in a town like Morgantown, and you refuse and all capitalized to recognize that yours is not the experience, perspective, or worldview of the majority of human organisms you meet on a daily basis. That fact does not make them racist or rather weak, ethnocentric, or hateful or ignorant. I mean, let me tell you something that proceeds to, like, you know, let you know how I'm lucky, you know, and I've done my best. And I went to the Ivy League, and I went to the Ivy League, too, bro. Uh, you know, and, and I went to Harvard, so, like, you went to Cornell, so that was another thing. I'm oh, sorry, that was just, I don't believe this, it's not even funny. But that was, like, <laughs> <laughs> lecturing. No, it's like this lecturing, like, oh, my God, 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 like, oh, my yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like a 20-page, it's like a 20 paragraph like, tome of, like, and, then you know, and you're, you're tortured, and then, you're, you know, we're, we're the suffering, you know, you're just, you're just perpetuating, like, the myth of the Latino and the suffering and the oppressed, and I'm like, are you kidding me? She wrote an open letter, and it got published online, and now she's meeting the president of the university, and she's probably 18 years old. So, how's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I mean, like, and it's horrible. Like, you're starting in college, there's hardware here. And you get met with, like, harassment, like, an elevator. Yeah, like, that's the way you like, like, you're not going to see more people in the world. Yeah, and it all shares. It all shares. The countless other stories of young Latino and Latina first first year students who are probably going through similar situations on different campuses. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then what what and then issues of mental health, depression, anxiety that leads to bigger and deeper issues because they're not speaking out. That's that's a serious problem. And so let's not yeah. you know, we need to applaud like Casey or Cassie, you know, Casey, Cassie, or Tampa, they have to tell her to do this. And anyone who disagrees and lectures this young woman, this first year student, who, and I'm, this is like a dad, this is totally my dad moment. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking my journalism hat off, I'm taking my, my all my efforts, the only time I have is dad hat, and I'm like, you need to deal with me. So there. <laughs> there, Sharice. <laughs> How's that? So you're at a dad moment. I love it. I love it when you have your dad moment. All right. Thank you for being right now. We're going back. This is a great show. Many thanks to Christian Enriquez for booking. Um, thank you, audio movement. We appreciate the help. You know, the love. Catch our podcast. Great review us on iTunes. We're also on Google Play. So he said, that it's always a pleasure. It's always good to hang out. Okay. Um, and we're going to close that with our Plebe and Penas Abiertas. This is Latino Levels Radio. We'll see you guys next week. Ciao. Take care, everybody.